Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about bridging. Um, what is bridging? Bridging is uh, boards that are put into either your floor system or your rafter system or your ceilings to add some rigidity to them. Okay, so there are two types of bridging. First one up here is solid bridging. Um, solid bridging is where you take the same size board as a fl the floor joist and you cut them to fit in between each of the floor joists. Okay. Um, so if this is a 2x6, then your bridging is going to be a 2x6. Okay, for example. Alright, so you can see there's two ways of nailing it. You can do it what they call inline, is like this, where you put one and then the other one. Um, the thing here is you have to nail one and then toenail the other one. Okay, so one you can nail in through the end, the other one will have to be toenailed. Okay. Um, to avoid the toenailing part, you may be do, do the offset method where you draw your line and then you put the first one on to the left of the line, next one to the right. Left, right, left, right, and you go all the way down through your um, entire floor system. Okay. The other method um, is what they call cross bridging. And cross bridging, um, you can get cross bridging either metal or wooden cross bridging and they again they go between the floor joists as from top of one to the bottom of the other one from top of one to the bottom of the other one okay so when you put the cross bridging in you'll come in and you'll nail the top of the cross bridging and you'll leave the bottom hang then you'll come in and you will install your subfloor which adds weight to your floor joists and once you have that weight applied then you'll have to crawl back up underneath and then you will nail the bottoms of the floor joist okay so why bridging well code says that you have to have if you have a clear span of less than eight feet you don't need floor bridge or floor bridging in your floor okay now, if it's over eight feet, then you need to install one row of bridging, all right? So from eight to 16 feet, you need one set of bridging. From 16 to 24 feet, you would need two sets of bridging, okay? So it's one for every eight feet, you should install one. So anything over eight feet, you have to have at least one set of bridging, okay? So what does it do? Well, it does a couple of things. Number one, it keeps the floor joist, it keeps it vertical, okay? So it's putting pressure at the top, it's putting pressure at the bottom, it can't twist or turn in there because if all y'all know over time that boards will do kind of funky things if they're not, if they don't have pressure applied to them at certain points to keep them straight, okay? So they keep the thing vertical, okay? The second thing is you can use them to align it, okay? Whatever your spacing is, whether you're 16 inches on center or 24 inches on center, it will keep your spacing because these won't fit in here if the spacings are off. Okay, so it will keep your spacing. And the third thing is load. It helps distribute load. Okay, if the, if the cross bridging wasn't there, all the load would be just applied to this one floor joist. But, because of the cross bridging, the load comes here, some of it is going to go down that cross bridging there. Then it's going to continue down here, and then it's going to go, it's going to come up, some of it's going to be transferred to the cross bridging that's nailed at the bottom. Okay, so what it does is puts this piece in compression and then this piece gets put in compression because it's pushing on there so it helps distribute the load so some here some there some there some there so it's not all on this one floor joist okay so those are the three things that um, are reasons why that it's installed so it keeps the floor joist vertical it keeps them aligned so that they stay so when you put your flooring on there that it's 16 inches on center or whatever so it's easier to nail or if you're going to put sheetrock underneath it, 
you can hang the sheetrock to the, the floor joists from underneath, and there's space 16 inches on center, so your sheets all land on edges like they're supposed to. Okay? So that's why you, you put the bridging in there. Um, another thing, reason you put the bridging in there is if you had a, if you're working with plywood that doesn't have tongue and groove, um, if you just have square ended sheets of plywood that you're using for your floor, uh, code says that you have to have a bridging underneath all of the seams, okay? So if there's a seam here, it has to have a floor, solid bridging underneath it. If the same thing, if this is the other edge, that would have to have um, bridging underneath it. So if your flooring is going this way and every four feet you're using um, square-ended sheets, you'd have to have a set of bridging every four feet, okay? So that's another reason why you put solid bridging in there, all right? Cross bridging and solid bridging work the same way. It's, it keeps them vertical, it keeps them aligned, and it applies the load, okay? So if you have a floor that's over eight feet long, it has to have at least one row of less than 16 feet, it has to have one row. Now, can you put it in there if you have a span of less than eight feet? Sure, because it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna help strengthen your floor by making it vertical, by aligning it, by transferring some of the load. So putting extra bracing or bridging into your floor system is not gonna hurt it in the slightest, okay? So that would be the methods for installing solid bridging and cross-bridging. That's it.